What's going on guys? It's Elias. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in today. We have some very exciting news. There are now what looks to be spy pictures of the next generation Civic Type R. So on this video today, I'm going to be covering in detail all of the findings. I'm also going to be covering uh, some differences and similarities between our current Civic Type R and the future one. Some of the things I like and some of the things I don't like and some of the things that we can look forward to in the future from other sources. So let's go ahead and get started. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, one thing I want to mention here is that a shocking amount of you guys that watch my videos don't tend to be subscribers. About 95% of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you can definitely hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, I would truly appreciate that guys. All right, let's get started with the video. So taking a look here, first of all, I want to make sure I give a huge shout out to civicx.com. This is where I found the information. I go on civicx.com probably at least once a day, sometimes once every couple of days, depending on my time and what I'm doing at work. You know, let's first take a look and see the val validity of, of the claims that this could be the next type R by looking at this picture right here. So this picture right here shows a lot of what's happening with this car. Right away, as soon as I saw this angle right here, I knew that this, at the very least, is a prototype of the future Civic Type R. Now, we can't say for sure if it's going to look exactly like this, but what we can know is that this at least looks like what a Civic Type R would look like in the future. And for comparison's sakes, look at my Type R, look at the body lines there, look at spe specifically right here, the window right here, where, it's, where it has a little kink right there. It's got the same thing right here. It's got the same slab of bodywork right over here. It's got the same overall design. Now, I think one of the biggest differences, you know, that I picked up on was the fact that the FK8 front end, it's pointier compared to this 11th generation. Now, it could be a number of different things. It could be that with the hood, they may have raised the hood for cooling capacity. They could have, they could just be cladding this and it could come to a better point, but I really don't think so. I think this is going to be the newest design language and looks looks properly set up. And because of the comparison, because of looking at it, because of the Brembo brakes, look at the brakes right here, how that's designed and look at these brakes. They're exactly the same in the exact same positions. So it's another clue right there. And the other clue is as well that these are two piece rotors. And as you know, the 2020 Civic Type R has two piece rotors. So those are gonna continue that trend of keeping the two piece rotors. So a couple of things that also confirm it is, and if we zoom in here, you see this seat right there. The driver's seat looks exactly what the current driver's seat looks like. It's the red with the black uh, or gray backing. It's, it's plastic that looks like carbon fiber. It's exactly the seat that we're using now, and it wouldn't make sense if to Han for Honda to use this particular seat in some other prototype. Let's say it's a regular hatchback prototype or something like that. So those few things, the, the brakes, the seat, uh, obviously the big wing in the back, all of these things point to the fact that this is very likely the next gen prototype. The biggest thing in my opinion that's new in the design at least of the car is all the way in the front and all the way in the back. So let's start at the front. This looks more like a 10th gen Accord than a Civic. And one of the reasons is because the next gen Civic is going to be based off of Honda's global architecture. What that means is that the global architecture that Honda has is basically the same chassis for the Accord, the CRV, the Civic, the HRV, the Fit. All of these vehicles are going to be sharing the same exact platform. And because of that, you, get, you have to make some compromises. And I think the compromise is they had to raise the front here to give room either to for engine cooling or for just make room for the engine. We also don't know what the power plant's going to be. You can pretty much be secure in the fact that it's going to be some kind of turbocharged a four-cylinder engine. It's likely going to be very similar to the K20C engine found in the current Civic Type R. It's an awesome engine putting out 300 horsepower. The thing I'm questioning right now is whether or not we're going to see some kind of hybrid option or hybridization of the Civic Type R. They may do like a performance hybrid system. That's what I've heard in the in some of the rumor mills that there will be a, either an optional or standard hybrid system that'll help push out more power. The other question I, I, I still like to be you know, find out or to be answered is whether or not they're gonna have an optional all-wheel drive for the Civic Type R. 
I think what I would like to see is an Acura Type R. Uh, you know, take the Civic Type R, restyle it, make an Acura version with all-wheel drive and a dual-clutch gearbox. That would be excellent. Keep the Honda Civic Type R raw and beautiful and lightweight without all-wheel drive. Make it manual only. Keep up the Civic Type R legend. Now, taking a closer look at the front, it looks like they're still keeping up with the giant wheels and small tires. Concentrating here on the grills, they look. it looks like they paid way more attention this time to the amount of airflow going through because these look like significant vents here compared to even my Civic Type R. So if you look at my Civic Type R, so you got a much smaller front vent here and a, a, a smallish vent here and a lot of plastic in between. And like I said before, the FK8 comes to a point, whereas the next gen Type R really doesn't. It kind of just stays flat and kind of has like a little forehead thing here. And I think that's to do with a lot of the airflow issues that we are having. They're trying to fix that. And I think it'll do a great job of that. This is a large amount of area to put air through and cool down the engine. Again, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same exact engine is FK8, they're probably going to add some mild hybrid or something to it. So it's going to need all that cooling capacity. The other thing I kind of see here, there might be a vent right up here. I don't see a hood scoop. It's one of the things that are, you know, the Type R has currently. There's a hood scoop right there. Uh, it's right there. But I don't see a hood scoop right here. I think I see a vent. That might be a vent. I didn't see a clear picture of what that could be. But it could very well be a vent to let air through. And, and make sure that the engine gets cooled down. That'd be su super awesome if we see that. The other part of it here is the, the rest of the bumper looks bulkier than the previous year. And I think it looks more like a BMW M2 a little thing. I think, I think that's good. The headlights are a little, a little suspect in my opinion. I think they're a little bit too big. If you see how large they are, they, they kind of outline the whole thing. They go all, almost all the way back to where the axle is. Taking a look at the rest of the car here, there's a more opened up picture that we can see the whole car it really starts looking again like the civic type r you see kind of the overall shape i think they they're leaving the hatch to be a little bit bigger this time i think this hatch is going to be bigger the next hat next generation's hatchback is going to be a little bit bigger than the previous generation's hatchback just because of the shape i see right here and yes it is still going to be a hatchback this has to be a hatchback because if you look at it here it's very similar to the type r i mean if you look at my type r here it's, it's kind of you can kind of see the shape right there. You can go back here. It's very similar there to what it is here. So I, I'm pretty sure I would, I would bet on it being a hatchback still. Looking at the front again, it looks more and more like a BMW M2. And I, I really want to see if that's a vent or not. Uh, again, we see kind of like a vent thing up here. That little opening right there. That excites me more than anything, actually, because the current Type R does not have provisions for a tow hook. You'd have to go to USR, United Speed Racing, get a tow hook from them, and then make a hole in your vents. Here, it looks like they've made a provision for that. I don't know if that's gonna make it to the factory, but I hope it does. And again, there's a much larger opening for your venting of your engine, and the styling overall looks more like a BMW M2. I think over here where you see all this masking tape is where the Honda sensing is going to be. Uh, from what I understand, Honda sensing is going to be standard across the entire Honda lineup. So it goes from any car that Honda makes will have Honda sensing, which it'll include the Type R. Now, concentrating here on the interior, it looks much better than the interior that we currently have. Now, I don't have much negative to say about my current interior. I feel like it's kind of rattly and the infotainment system in the current 10th Gen Civic Type R is outdated. It was outdated when it came out. But as far as the new interior, I like the steering wheel. It looks like a BMW steering wheel. And if they keep this design, I'd be uh, super happy. I, I'd like the thin design with the fat spokes. Now, I, I hope that in the future I, they'd add some red to it. I, you can't tell in this picture if it's red or not. It's kind of difficult. I, I like where they put the new screens on the next gen Civics. You can be rest assured that all of the next-gen Civics are going to have the exact same interior for the most part. So that will be the same across. And again, we take a look at the driver's seat, and it's that same red Type R driver's seat that we, we know and love. Now, taking a closer look at the back here, not much to really talk about. I, I didn't mention this before, but I really don't like this marker right here, this side marker or this rear marker. I don't know if that's a Europe standard thing or if it's going to come on all Civic Type R's but 
I'm not I'm not liking certain design cues. It's very difficult to kind of see. If you look at the taillight design, it looks more like a like an Evo, like an Evo 10s taillight design than our, our 10th Gen Civic taillight design. I mean, if you look at this taillight design here, I, I really like it. It's really unique and it really stands out. If you look at the current one, if I can find it, uh, it, it looks a little bit more generic. Uh, maybe that's good for some of the people that didn't like all the crazy styling, quote unquote crazy styling of the Civic Type R, but you know, that's 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 fine. And the the wing, I think I think you can get a taller wing. You know, it's kind of the signature type R thing, have a huge wing. One thing I wanted to note here as well is if you see where the door closes, you see this pocket right here. That's not an actual speed hole, but it is the same as what we have for the type R's. We have kind of a uh, we have expanded our our body structure to fit bigger tires and bigger wheels so that's what you're seeing right there this has been this is body cladding to put on there to accommodate for the bigger wheels and tires of a civic type bar now this is uh, this i wanted to show you guys and i wanted to kind of zoom in right here because i'm pretty sure i found the vent now again the interior is pretty nice it's not not a bad interior brembo brakes etc but if you take a look here, there's definitely a, some kind of vent right there. And uh, the other thing I want to show you here is uh, there is definitely a cutout for the three exhausts that are likely going to appear in the next generation Type R. Uh, this exhaust is kind of hilarious. Uh, this is just this is just bent metal. The other piece of it, if you compare it to the current generation Type R, and this is the current Type R here, compare this to this, it's quite a bit of a difference. So uh, if you take a look, at, it's kind of more flat, where this is a bit more curved and kind of forward facing. This is more flat against the, the back of the car. Now this is gonna give it increased utility. As you know, the, the flatter, the more square a space is, the more useful it is. Also, you can see here the more muscular rear end that the Type R has. It's kind of carried over from the previous generation. You have the muscular, muscularity showing there. The biggest difference is they're gonna instead of starting it at the door, they're gonna start it back here. I think it, I think that looks fantastic. Now looking dead on a side view of the 11th gen Civic Type R, you can see, you know, a lot of people are gonna have problem with what this looks like back here. Again, they're, Honda's doing that for utility purposes, and I, I support them on that. I think that's a that's a useful step to take to make sure that the hatch area is more useful but some people may have some issues with that. And you can see another view there. There could be a, another vent right there, if I'm not mistaken. There, there could be a small vent there and one there and then one on the side. That would be more than enough for, for cooling the engine bay. Now, I don't know what provisions they would take to make sure that nothing, no water goes through. Some people might have trouble with that. I personally wouldn't mind. And uh, the other thing I wanna point out here is the lights. So the lights here, and let's zoom in a little bit. These lights, Again, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm the biggest fan of these lights right now. Uh, I kind of, you know, it took me a while for me to like the my this these lights. I mean, they look like alien lights to me, but they're okay. I mean, they've grown on me. I'm okay with them now. But looking at the newer lights, the next generation lights, and they look more like BMW than anything else. If you look at new BMW lights, uh, they look pretty much the same. You can see they are kind of the same jewel eye design as the current lights. They're just bigger. And then you look at the turn signal. This whole thing is a turn signal. I'm just not sure I like I like it placed there. Maybe under it would be a little bit better. The main reason I'm showing you this is because it still has provisions for brake ducts and it has brake ducts built in and you can see right there, there's a hole right there and a hole right there to let the air through so the brakes can get cooled down. I love that they're keeping that. It's, it's a really nice feature to have. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed uh, this deep dive and I made this video nice and quick for you guys so you guys can really concentrate on some of the differences and some of the main points of the Civic Type R and what this upcoming Civic Type R brings. Again, big thanks to civicx.com. The forum is awesome. You should go visit them. There's some information in there uh, to share. I'll be covering more more details as I, as I get them. I've reached out to some of my people in within Honda itself to see if I can get some more tidbits of information and put things together for you guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.